The sweeping new vaccine requirements to stop the deadly COVID virus, well, they've got some Republican governors and others threatening lawsuits. And while many details about the rules remain unknown, can the government tell us what to put in our body? Is the president's vaccine mandate legal? It is time now to let it rip. Joining me now, attorneys, you know them, Jeffrey Feiger and Catherine Henry. Let's bring them on right now. All right, let me start with uh, Jeffrey Feiger. Did President Biden overstep his authority by ordering this vaccine mandate? Is this legal? Of course it is. It's been legal for well over 100 years. Uh, the government's vac uh, compelled vaccinations as early as the smallpox vaccinations in the early uh, 20th century. Uh, it was brought to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said the greater good prevailed. People who wish to uh, not be vaccinated uh, had to pay a fine, but they can't infect. Uh, uh, they have to pay a penalty for f infecting all their other neighbors. And it carries out to today. We have vaccination requirements for children, uh, for polio, for smallpox, uh, and all sorts of vaccinations which we require. And that's part of the social compact, Charlie. And they'll be upheld in every court in which they're challenged, all every right. single one. Let's bring in Catherine. Henry, attorney as well, I believe that she is going to be challenged. Well, maybe not her, but certainly we're going to hear some lawsuits. But let me bring in Catherine Henry right now. First of all, uh, the president said, uh, doesn't OSHA, and, and, and obviously the case is going back 100 years, they seem to uphold uh, workplace safety. Uh, what do you think? Is there a good legal challenge to the vaccine mandate? Oh, 100%. In fact, um, first of all, I'd like to, to focus on the fact that although there might be some argument that some of these mandates are legal, what's important is that they're not constitutional. If the government does not have a specific authority granted to them in the Constitution to do a certain act, they can't do it. They can't just have Congress make a law that gives them the authority to do it because Congress didn't have the authority to give away in the first place. So absolutely, there is a legal challenge to be had here. And no, government can never force people to inject something into their bodies. That's the purpose of the Ninth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And here in Michigan, Article 1, Section 23, we have unenumerated rights that are given to us by God, and the government has to protect them. They can't just act for the greater good. And that's part of the exact same social compact that Jeffrey Feiger was just mentioning. What, what, what about, all right, Jeffrey, why don't you ask, what about OSHA requirements? Catherine, what about the OSHA requirements, though? Doesn't the government have a duty to keep workplace safe, Catherine? Um, the number of times that the word safe or safety is in the Constitution kind of tells us the story. No, um, the government's job is not to run around and try to police safety for everybody. Now, it happens in certain situations, but also we need to remember there's a separation of powers. In Michigan specifically, we have that delineated in our Constitution word for word. But even in the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, everything is specified out as to which branch gets to do which items. Right. And no, our, our executive branch does not get to make legislation. They do not get to make laws, right. especially ones that are this egregious, forcing people to put something into their bodies. Right. Even uh, if their doctor has said, no, don't do it, or the CDC has said, no, this is contraindicated for somebody of your nature right. Let's, or with your medical conditions, they can't do that at all. That's right. not even their place within the Let's, system of government. All right, Jeffrey, you want to, you want to respond to yeah, that? Yeah, Charlie, that just misstates what they're doing. Nobody's making people take vaccines. They're saying, if you don't take a vaccine, you can't do this, this, and this. You're not going to be able to get on an airplane. You're not going to do be able to go to school. You're not going to be able to do a whole bunch of things. There is no mandate requiring people to put a vaccine in their body. So uh, the young lady is just misstating the uh, what is going on in terms of max, uh, vaccine mandates. But for the greater good, we do it all the time. We don't just do it for children and vaccines. We do it for secondhand smoke. We do it for smoking. In fact, the same people who are attacking the vaccine mandate are the ones who says the state can control a woman's body and tell her if she can or can't have an abortion, which is pure hypocrisy. If the state can tell a woman what she has to do with the fetus growing in her own body or can tell her she can't have an abortion, the state can sure make decisions that affect other people. And in this case, the, the decision to not get a vaccine so you're affects a, a whole here. lot of other. Well, the people who are arguing against vaccines are the same people who argue in favor of abortion. So they're hypocrites. Um, but nobody's talking about forcing people to have vaccines. 
vaccine. They're saying you're going to have a vaccine or you're not going to work at this hospital. You're not going to work in this clinic. You're not going to get on this airplane. You're not going to go to school. And Jeffrey, you're going to pay a heavy price. Jeffrey, but let me ask you real quick, though. Under the president's plan, as I understand this now, employees must pay for the vaccine. Now, the employers may pay for it, but if they can or won't, then it's up to the employee to pay for it. Doesn't that, isn't that like a government mandate, which I thought was unconstitutional under the Obamacare? No. In fact, going back 100 years, it was the Jacobson case. Uh, they said if you don't take the smallpox vaccine, you have to pay a $5 fine. And the Supreme Court said that was 100% constitutional. So that is not uh, unconstitutional. And it's been that way for over 100 years. That's why not one court decision, when it's been challenged, even recently in Indiana, in Texas, where it was brought before Amy Coney Barrett, uh, she denied uh, the uh, petitioner's right to stop the University of Indiana from forcing uh, the students to have uh, COVID vaccines. Right. Catherine, Catherine, what about a couple of those cases that Jeffrey Figer mentioned? One of the Jacobson case goes back to 1905, which basically the court said, hey, if you don't want to get the small packs vaccine at the time, you pay a $5 fine. That was upheld. Yeah. It was a different scenario, but why he said he keeps saying that every single case everywhere. Why don't we look at what just happened in New York City with the biggest teachers union that exists there and they just won their case and it didn't even have to go that high up. Even an arbitrator was able to understand that you can't just simply tell people, well, if you don't get this vaccine, then you're not going to have a place to work. No, they have to keep them on the payroll. So, no, this is not something where he's just blatantly lying to you by saying that every single court everywhere is going to agree with this because it's not constitutional. Catherine, Catherine, what about the point Jeffrey Feiger made about the government tells us a lot. I mean, we have to get vaccines to go to school. Uh, there are certain places where we can't smoke. We have to wear seat belts. Those are all government telling us what to do. Why is that any different than the COVID vaccine? Well, and actually you point out school uh, mandates and things like that. That is something that in many states, uh, the people have been fighting for many years. It is not a settled point of law, and certainly these vaccines are no settled point of science. In fact, look at the definition of science. It's where you have a hypothesis, you have some experimentation, and then you come to some sort of conclusion. It's not something you can do in well, a year I, or can, year and a half. I say time. One, could I say one thing, Charlie? Jeffrey, yeah. Just yesterday, we celebrated 9-11. 2,500, 300, 3,000 people died. We've now probably lost a million people to COVID. After 9-11, we restricted virtually everything. We passed the Patriot Act. It was virtually impossible to get into airports or to fly. Everybody had to give up a little freedom because we understood the dangers of possible terrorism. Well, aren't we willing to give, and that's the social compact that every court talks about, giving up a little freedom so that we don't don't kill our no. fellow Americans by spreading disease. Now, how can you support restrictions of freedom in terms of 9-11 and then say it's okay to lose a million people from COVID, like their cordwood, like our citizens That's are cordwood? Catherine, Catherine, go ahead. In fact, the science is actually pretty clear that when you have uh, this many people that are dying or having severe adverse reactions from these vaccines, it is actually something that in any other scenario, the FDA, CDC, they would have pulled these vaccines from the market. They wouldn't even be on there right now. But it, there's no proven uh, science anywhere about the fact that, you know, once people even have COVID-19 and they're immune, that they should be going out and getting these vaccines. That's nonsense. Fact, what you're spreading is, is falsehood. You know Nobody's you're dying from these vaccines. The you're Nobody the is. You're just what we need to do is look at both the Constitution, not some figment of a social contract, but the actual wording of the Constitution, which does not allow our bodies to be treated like it's an experiment. This is not an experiment. And you don't give up a little bit of freedom just for the greater good. That is the opposite of what is intended or written into the language of the Constitution itself. Let Nowhere get, in the Constitution get, does allow Jeffrey, government to do that. Jeffrey, just conceptually, what do you say to people that don't like the government telling them what to put in their bodies. They just don't like it. And, and the government isn't telling them what to put in their bodies. It's just not doing it. If they don't like it, do, though, they're going to have to pay a heavy price to live in this country because they don't have the right to be infected and spread disease to other people. They don't have and that right. And that's a greater good. And that's what we're talking about in terms of the social comp. Let me finish. That's what we're talking about in, in terms of the social compact. You don't have unfettered rights in this country to do whatever you want, regardless of what 
it would do to other people. That's why you can't set up a thermonuclear plant in your own house, because you don't have the right to possibly poison your entire state. You don't have the right to do a lot of things. You don't have the right to own uh, uh, weapons indiscriminately. You don't have the right to own uh, uh, certain guns. Uh, we restrict all sorts of things, and nobody is saying they have to take a vaccine. They are saying if you don't do it, certain things will happen to you, right. and that is legal. Catherine, real quick, I'll give you 20 seconds. Final thought, Cara, uh, Catherine, go ahead. Yes, absolutely. We need to remember what the words of the actual Constitution say, whether you're looking at your state constitutions or whether you're looking at the U.S. Constitution. There is no phrase of the greater good. There is nothing in there that even remotely suggests that a president or Congress or anybody else in government, for that matter, Supreme Court, could tell you that you have to give up some of your rights for the greater good because we think it may help people, especially in this scenario. Let's look at the science and the facts. There's no proven anything right. that somebody who had COVID-19 or hasn't had COVID-19 is going to go out and infect right. and kill people. Can it's an assumption. Okay. Jeffrey Feiger, Catherine. Catherine, by the way, I hope you challenge this. I really do. Not because I agree with the message here, but I want some court somewhere to finally tell us what is the law and how we can use that, whatever this vaccine mandate turns out to be. They already have. Challenge it. They already have. Okay. The, the debate continues.